won that movie. I don't want that movie, Mom. Mom, I don't want that movie. I don't want that movie. I don't want that movie. This is preschool for your age. Let's see what the other kids are doing. This is a great movie. Maybe I should have my laptop instead. Huh. Mm -hmm. Bigger. Ready? Yeah, 15 minutes. Okay. Hello, everybody. We got to turn our thing off. I'm not going. All right, welcome to our second day of virtual school. Um, if you are just joining us for the first time, feel free to go to our YouTube channel and you can see our first vi um, video on that, um, on our YouTube channel, it's called The Reading Corner. Um, what? Later today. Um, I don't think either of those are on there yet, but we also have, if you are joining us um, from Pacific or Mountain Time, we have our videos that we um, recorded from the last couple days. So YouTube, The Reading Corner, you can get those. Um, today I will be doing some more of the I Say You Say with the phonograms. I'm not gonna go over our letter sounds. So if you go onto our YouTube channel and do I Say You Say, find that one and that's our letter sounds. So like even the people at my school, my teachers at my school um, always use that video, even in the, I even use it in my classroom. Um, just because it was easy to make sure I was doing the right movements and like that. So we are going to get started. Um, I'm going to do our kind of our literacy section, and then Ms. Kim's going to come back on and do our math section, and then I'm going to end it with um, our handwriting and our writing. Um, we are using our kindergarten curriculum from our website. So if you want to follow along, read Corner Online. Um, right now it's $7.99 for a month or $50 for the entire year. Um, and we're going to extend through this, you guys, through the summer. Um, we have really great summer workbooks. So right now we're finishing weeks 18 to about 24. And then right after that, we're going to get started in our 10-week workbook. Um, so this is just going to be a really great thing that you guys can be using through till the next school year when, um, and this is just going to get your kids like super ready for it. So um, as you can see, we have our bubblegum game. We're going to start with that. That is found in the curriculum, and there are little slats that you can use as well. So, like, I might take these and cut these up and put them around the room um, and have my child, like, we always played where the kids would go around and, like, try to find the words. So, this is a really great hands-on activity to kind of get sight word recognition in there. Um, you can also just kind of cut them up and put them on the floor and have your child kind of slap them, or you could make a big memory game out of it, which would be a lot of fun. Um, and it looks like there's two of most of them. So you might have to make two copies of that. Um, we have in our kindergarten curriculum, we have some comprehension. We try to embed a little bit of comprehension every week. So this is something your child might be able to read by themselves, but if not, it's just a really great way of starting to say, what is that? Is that Jack? My kids are playing Legos. Um, this is just a really good way of just starting to teach your child that we have to, you know, have, we have to look at back into the text and underline the answers and stuff like that. So this is a, one of the things I suggest for today. And then um, we are going to do a little making words today. So we've got this making words activity that you can do. 
Today, I'm going to be doing two letter fibrams. Um, if you are enjoying this and you want to take more time and do um, lessons outside of the three days that we're offering, if you go again onto our YouTube and you fast forward to the ending, the last hour is kind of a lot like this. It's our VBK and kindergarten program, but I do different things. So like today in that one, I did um, making words with three letter words. Today, I'm going to do it with you guys with phonograms. So moving on. Um, and then we did, we have a draw match activity. So those are the ones I would recommend. If you look at our kindergarten curriculum, it is broken down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There isn't a lot of math in there yet because it's, it's still in my editor's like computer. Um, but that will all be kind of rolling out as well. So let's get started. Um, we are going to start, do you remember these guys? These are our trickster words. And if you weren't with us yesterday, remember trickster words are sight words, but we like to call them trickster words because it makes it a little more fun. And my kids in my classroom love to make sure those words don't trick them. So we like to make sure that we find them and we circle them. And so we're gonna do a lot of that today. But I wanna go over the words that we're gonna practice today. This is the word, I say play. You say, I say are. You say, I say, or. You say, or. I say, L-I-K-E, like. You say, L-I-K-E, like. Look at this, you guys. Remember yesterday, I think I told you guys that we have four cats. This is, oh, look at his little thing. This is um, Molly. Can you say hi to Molly? Molly's gonna, I think she's gonna take a little nap back here. All right, I say G O go. You say G O go. I say we, you say we. I say I, you say I. I say L I T T L E little. You say L I T T L E little. I say Y-O-U says you. You say Y-O-U says you. I say B-I-G big. You say B-I-G big. All right, so I'm gonna move this a little bit closer because these are the words that we're gonna be using. Okay, we're gonna play our bubble gum game. Bubble, bubble gum, bubble, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word play if you wish. Can you find this word in our bubble gums? Great. Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word R if you wish. Can you see the word R? Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word or for if you wish. Can you see the word for? Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word L I K E like. Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word G O go. Do you see the word G O go? Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word we. If you wish. Do you see the word we? Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word I, if you wish. Do you see the word I? Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word L-I-T-T-L-E, little. Do you see the word little? Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word Y-O-U says you. Do you see the word Y-O-U says you? Good, one more. Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. I see the word big. Do you see the word big? All right, so parents, if you follow along with our curriculum, you will see that we um, have a lot of games. We use a lot of games with really everything. Um, obviously, we have worksheets because we have to get it to you, but everything's really hands-on. We cut and paste it. Um, we really want to make sure that we make it as interactive as possible, by, but it's, at the same time, really crunching in as much curriculum and concepts as we can. So 
this is our game for this week, but if you go to the next week and you go to prior weeks, you'll see that there are tons of different site word games. So before we get started on our new story, you guys, I wanna go ahead and review our old story. So this is called a warm text because it's one that we've already read. But I've got my magic pen, and what happens with my pen is you can't move to the next word until I move the pen, okay? So I'm gonna practice the first word with you. Um, and notice we've got some color words. I think this is one that I did this morning. Maybe, no, I did this to you guys. This, we do have our color words. We circled some of those trickster words. Does anyone remember what this word is? This is the word have. Do you remember what this word is? This is the word new. And the word new is just like the word see and just like the word for. That's what we've noticed so far. Because all three of those words are trickster words, but then they also have a hidden funny phonogram in them. So they're like extra special words. I'm gonna read the first sentence, and then I want you guys to kind of come around with me, but remember you can't start talking and reading until this pen gets on the word. You ready? I have a, what's this word? New, what's this color word? Brown scarf. Okay, before we get started again, I'm just gonna review these words. My word is scarf. What's that word? Scarf. My word is jacket. What's my word? Jacket. My word is sweater. What's my word? Sweater. My word is shirt. What's my word? Shirt. My word is dr s. What's my word? Dress. My word is pants. What's my word? Pants. Okay. So now we can get started with our phonogram or our um, literacy story. Ready? I don't move on yet. Have a new brown scarf. Ready? I have a new yellow jacket. I have a don't move on. New pink sweater. I have a new green, don't move on, shirt. I have a new blue dress. Oh, there's that word that tricked us last time. It's the word A and D. A and D and 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 and. So we have a new word in here. And I have new green pants. Good job, you guys. So we always try to review our literacy story from yesterday. Today, I'm not gonna be doing a morning message. I try to mix things up a little bit because I wanna get to that handwriting or that um, making words. We do have a new literacy story. Now, I'm gonna move it really close to you guys again. I found some trickster words that are in our literacy story. So I want you to look and see if you see them. The first one is the word have. What sound do you hear at the beginning of have? Do you see this word? The next word is C-A-N, can. See that word can? Can you find this word in our literacy story? This is the word want. What sound do you hear at the beginning of want? Wha, wha, wha. Do you see this word in our literacy story? This word is some. What sound do you hear at the beginning of some? The S. Do you see this word in our literacy story? 
We know this one. Y-O-U says you. This is so hard. Do you know this one? This one says please. Do you see this word in here? Now, this literacy story is probably kind of difficult. Um, in our kindergarten curriculum, parents, we have three different levels of our kindergarten, or three different levels per week, because typically in kindergarten, kid kids are coming in at all different levels. Um, if this is too difficult or not difficult enough, we do have literacy stories on our website that if you literally just access library and type in literacy story, you're gonna see all different kinds. So we're gonna get started. And when I do this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and circle those trickster words that we just talked about. So this sentence will be easier for you. Oh, I noticed something's missing from our literacy story. Do you notice something's missing from our literacy story? We don't have the pictures. And you know, boys and girls, good readers use pictures or pictures to help get clues about the words. So if we don't have the pictures, these are gonna be really hard words for us to read, right? Let me find, you guys, Molly is taking a nap back here. I wish you could see her. See her? Okay, the first word I have is T. What sound do you hear at the beginning of T? Do you see one of these words that begins with that t, t, t sound? If you point it here, the right. I know you guys all probably like this. This is a milkshake. What sound do you hear at the beginning of milkshake? Mmm, mmm, right? Do you see one of those words that begins with the M mm, or the letter M? I made my pictures a little too big, I think, you guys. Okay. This one is soda. It's not good for you. What sound do you hear at the beginning of soda? S do you see one of those words that begins with the S? The letter S. What's this? Lemonade. What sound do you hear at the beginning of lemonade? Do you see a word that begins with the L sound? This one is, oh, I made a mistake. This is actually coffee. What sound do you hear at the beginning of k -k coffee? A C, so that goes up there. I did make my pictures a little too big. So this one is the T. What sound did we say at the beginning of T? What sound did we say is at the beginning? T -t -t -t. So we're gonna put that. And then we have water. What sound do you hear at the beginning of water? Woof, woof, woof. Good. All right. So we are going to read our story. So what I did was I went ahead and underlined the words that are the trickster words. So we have can, please, have. So guys, those are three words now that you know, and you can use the picture clues. Do you think you can try to read that? Let's read it. Can I please have a coffee. Yep. All right, I'm gonna look for these words. Do you see these words in this next sentence? Take a second. I see Y-O-U says you. I see W-A-N-T, want. Do you see any more? Yep, some. And then you have a picture to help you with the clue. What is it? So now you know you want some, you can read this sentence, ready? Do you want some lemonade? All right, take a second and look in this one and see if you see any of these trickster words in there. I see 
Y-O-U says you. I see that word want again. I see the word some. Hmm. I know this is the word T, but I see a word that I don't know. The word is ot. What's that word? Hot. Do you want some hot tea? You read that. All right, look at these trickster words. See if you see them up here. I see that word can. Let me see if I can squeeze around. Oh, I see that really hard one. Do you remember the one that starts with the p, -p, -p sound? It's the word please. See any more? Have, okay. Good readers use the pictures to get a clue. Which word do you think this is? Milkshake, let's read it. Can I please have a milkshake? Okay, do you see any in this one? I see you, I see want, I see can. Let's read it. Do you want a can of soda? So that's a silly word because the word can is a trickster word, but it's also the name of an object. It's the name can, like a can of soda or a can of soup. All right, let's look at this last one. Oh, I see a lot of them in here. Point them out. I have the word can, that really hard one, please have some, yeah, let's read it. Can I please have some water? All right, you guys, you did a great job on that. We will reread that tomorrow. But if you want to find some more literacy stories, you can go on our website and then we, um, I'll talk at the end a little bit about book charts because we use book charts in our school, but I want to move on because I want to get as much in that we can. And we're going to do, first of all, we got to do our, I say, you say with our phonograms. You guys, Molly is sitting on our cards. I hope I don't wake her up. All right, ready? I say, ch k oh, sorry. I say, ch k sh you say, ch k sh I say, er like in first, you say er like in first. I say oi, you say oi. Oh, this is that tickle one. I do not like this one. I say mmm, you say mmm. Uh. I say ooh, uh. you say ooh, uh. I say ow, oh. You say ow, oh. I say r. You say r. I say a. You say a. I say sh. You say sh. I say e. You say e. Okay, I hope you can see me, these letters. Can I see this all right? Okay, so we've got, you got Molly over here. We've got some letters and we've got just a couple phonograms. So we have the phonogram E, the phonogram R, and the phonogram U, U. So parents, I'm gonna show you how to do this, but this is such an easy, fun and interactive activity. I literally do making words in my classroom every week. And then what I found um, that we can talk about a little bit um, during writer's workshop is I actually bring those, those magnetic letters back out during writer's workshops. So when my kiddos are trying to write a word, I will give them the letters they need for that word. Like let's say they want to spell out the word dinosaur. That's a really hard word. So I might not give them all of the um, vowels, but I will give them a D, an N, an O, an S, and an R. And I mix them all up and then I have them spell it out before they write it. So it's just a really great way of using those letters and helping them to, um, sometimes I just give them the sounds, but I also can give them the letters to make the sounds. So we're gonna start by just making a couple words. 
I want you to make the word meet. Now notice my hand. When there is a two letter phonogram, I put my fingers together. So I've got m, mm, e, t. So you might want to write that word and see if you can write the word m, mm, e, t. Let's see. M, mm, e, t. Neat. All right, great. What if we take away a letter and we add the, what word is that? E, t, feet. Great. All right, let's start another word. I want you to make the word R. Like I needed a new part for my car. P R T. Notice where my two letters, my fingers are stuck together. Try to write that word as I'm making it. P R T. Part. Okay. I'm gonna leave that up there. Can you make the word Far, three letter word, R. Parents, a lot of times if I do a making words activity, I will actually write the words on index cards as we're making them and then we can do a sorting activity. So we can sort them by phonograms, by beginning sounds. So that's just a really great like word sorts and making words are um, two of my favorite things. All right, does anybody remember what this two letter phonogram says? Yeah, it says ooh. Uh, can you make the word root? Er, oot. Watch me on time and let me know when Kim's ready, Andy. Er, oot. Let's try it. What time is it? Er, oot. Root. Now, what would happen if I take away that R and I put an F? What word would that be? So root was er, oot. So this must be f, oot, foot. Wait, that's not a word, foot. I remember that the, the o, o says ow, o, or oo, uh, sorry. So oo, like in root, and uh, like in foot. Kind of sounds the same. Oo, uh. Boys and girls, that's why when we do them, if there's two or three sounds, we teach all of them. So when you get to a word, you can try all those sounds to see which one makes sense, right? What if I take away the F? Oh, actually, no. Nope. And I put a B. B, U, T. Which one would that be? Boot and boot and root rhyme. Okay, let's try one more. I want to do the word farm. Can you spell the word R? Mm. Let's try it. R. Mm. Farm. Now, what if I take away that F? What would that word be? Arm. What if I take away the M and I add a T? What would that word be? Art. You're right. All right, let's try one more. Is she ready yet or no? Okay, so let's do the word. Hmm. Put my two letter phonograms back up. And let's do the word hoop. Can you spell the word hoop? Oop. Remember too, you guys, if you're writing these words, make sure you're underlining them, okay? Oop. 
Oh, I see one more that we can make with this. What is this word? Ooh. Ooh. Mm. So do you guys see when you start using two letter phonograms, you can actually find a lot of two letter phonograms. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to get a big piece of paper and I want you to write these three phonograms. E, E, A, R, and O, O. And for the next week, I want you to go on a phonogram hunt. I want you to look in the books that you're reading, in the literacy stories you're reading, in like magazines, if you're eating your cereal. And I want you to start looking because you're gonna be really surprised that a lot of words have these funny phonograms. So I'm gonna have you start looking around and then your mom or dad next week can message me and share with me how many you do. You guys, so when we do these in my classroom, we keep them up pretty much for like the week and my kids find like 20, 30, maybe even 50 words that have these phonograms. So see if you can challenge yourself and maybe find 10 of each of the phonograms. All right. Okay. So we're going to move on to Miss Kim and we're going to do our math. And then you guys are going to come back to me and we're going to do our handwriting and writing. So everyone say good morning or good afternoon, Miss Kim. Hi, friends. I'm so happy to be with you today doing math. I'm going to start off singing by my, my hello song. So hello, friends. How are you? Hello, friends. And how do you do? Let's give an air high five. High five. Hi, friends. Oh, we're going to take a look at this chart behind me. Okay. Oh, no. I'm missing some numbers here. Somebody took our numbers. Hmm. I think it might be Swiper. Everybody say, Swiper, no swiping. Do this. Swiper, no swiping. Swipe is just a fancy word for take or steal, okay? Swiper is this little fox and he comes and he swipes things. And today, Swiper, he stole, he swiped our numbers. We need to get them back. Will you help me get them back from him? You will? Awesome, let's go. All right, we're gonna count to see which numbers are missing so we can get them back from Swiper. Here we go, ready? One, two, three, you're right. Three is missing. Okay, let's see. Which one is, is this three or is this three? Oh, you're right, this is three. We got three back from Swiper. All right, let's start at the beginning and see what other numbers are missing. Ready, ready to count with me? Get your finger ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is missing, you're right. Hmm, I need help. Let's see. Is this seven or is this seven? Oh, this is seven? Okay, great. Thanks for your help. All right, let's start at the beginning. We have one more missing number. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is missing. And I have one number left. This is the number nine. Awesome, let's put it up here. Thank you for helping me solve the mystery of the missing numbers. You are such a great detective. All right, now we need to count these dots up here, all right, and count to see how many we have, okay? I'm gonna get my magic counting finger ready, okay? Get yours ready too, because I need your help. Here we go. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, what? Did I go too fast? Oh, I did, didn't I? I went way too fast, and I didn't point to all of the dots and say the numbers in order. You're right. I'll go slower. All right, here we go. Let's try again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can you find the number 10? Here it is. All right, let's count the red dots here. One, two, three, 
four, five. Oh, here's the number five. You're doing so great. Keep up the good work. One, two, three, four. Four pink dots. All right, let's count these blue dots now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I see the number nine. Let's count these red dots right here. One, two, three. You're doing great so far. Okay. Now let's count these purple dots right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's the number seven. Oh, we did it. We completed our task. All right, you know what? That deserves a celebration cheer. All right, let's do, let's do fantastic. That's a fun cheer. Fantastic is a cleaner. Okay, that isn't used very much today, but it used to be. So get a spray bottle, okay? And you're gonna spray and go, pss, pss, pss. Now get your wipe. Fantastic. Let's try it one more time. Get your spray bottle and spray. Pss, pss, pss. Fantastic. That was awesome. Okay, now it's time for our number of the day. I cannot wait to see what the number of the day is. I'm so excited. All right, I'm gonna turn my easel around. All right, maybe you can give it a drum roll. All right, are you drum rolling? Are you drum rolling to see what the number of the day is? All right, here we go. The number of the day is, you guessed it, it is 10. That's right, the number of the day is 10. Now, before we get started, let's kind of stretch and get up I can't really stand up, but you can stand up. And what we're gonna do is we're going to jump up and down. We're gonna put our hands in the air, okay, like this. All right, ready? Here we go. One, or we're gonna count by tens to 100, okay? I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. Ready, here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Nice, counting by tens to 100. All right, now we've got the wiggles out. Okay, let's do our number of the day. All right, here we go. All right. The first thing we're gonna do for the number of the day is we're gonna count out 10 of these red dots, okay? All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, well done. All right, moving on. Does anybody know what this math tool is called? Ten frame? You're right, it is a ten frame. Now, when you fill in a ten frame, you have to make sure that you start um, from your left, the top left, okay? and move to the top right, okay? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Now I go to the bottom left. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome stuff. All right. All right, we completed our, what's that called again? Ten frame, you got it. Now. The ordinal number for 10 is 10th. We're going to see which color is 10th in line. Okay? All right. Who, oh, who is 10th in line? Oh, who, oh, who can it be? Who, oh, who is 10th in line? Let's count and we shall see. Now, when we, in a line, when we're counting ordinal numbers, we always start, okay, on your left and move to the right. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, oh, sorry. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. That's right. Purple was tenth in line. All right, way to use your ordinal numbers, friends. All right, now we're going to tally, okay? 
Hi ho the Dario, a tally is just a stick. A tally is just a stick. A tally is just a stick. Hi ho the Dario, a tally is just a stick. That's just a little song that helps my brain remember what a tally is. All right, 10 tallies. This is gonna be a big job, but I'm not worried. I know you can get it done. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five is a slash. Six, seven, eight, nine, I have four. I think my 10th one is a slash. Okay, now when we count these tallies, a, this is called a bundle, okay? Five tallies is called a bundle. Everybody say bundle. Yeah, a bundle is worth five. Did you know when you have tallies, you don't have to, if you have a bunch of bundles, you don't need to count each tally by ones. You know what you can do? You can count the tallies by fives. Here we go. Five, 10. Five, 10, we have 10 tallies. Great job. Now who remembers what this math tool is called? It is, it's a number bond, you're right. Okay, all right, ready? So this is called the whole, okay? And in the whole, we're going to put our number of the day, which is 10. All right, now, these are the parts. These are the parts that make up the whole, okay? Part, part, whole, number, bond, part, part, whole, Number bond. I'm going to pick a number under 10. Hmm. Let's see. I have one. Okay. And then I'm going to count from one up to 10 to see what my other part is. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Oh, my other part is going to be nine. Okay, let me do my dots now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's see if my two parts, one and nine, add up to my whole of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You guys, we can make an addition sentence based on this number bond. One part plus nine parts equals 10 whole parts, okay? All right, now there are many different combinations to add up to 10. We're just gonna do one today. All right, take a look at our number line. Now what we're gonna do using our number line, we are gonna count backwards all the way from 10. And when we get to zero, we're gonna say blast off, okay? All right, do it with me. Use the, the number line to help you. Number line is another great math tool. Here we go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. All right, well done. Great job counting backwards. All right, here we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to find our number of the day, which is 10 on our number line. Okay, one more is just the next number after the number of the day. Their number of the day is 10. So one more than 10 would be, you go forward on the number line, it would be 11. So that's just like saying 10 plus one equals 11. All right, now we're gonna do one less. That's just like saying 10 minus one or the number that comes before 10. Let's hop backwards, little froggy. The number that comes before 10 or the number that is less, one less than 10 is nine. All right, you're doing such a great job. This is like big kid stuff. This is big kid math and you're keeping up great. All right, here we go. Now remember, we talked about those words even and odd. Mm -hmm. Yep, a number can be even or it can be odd, okay? And a way to help us remember that is, remember we draw dots, 
the number of dots, okay? Let's draw 10 dots and we're gonna pair each dot up with a friend, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <gasps> wow, ten is even Stephen. Ten, each one of them has a friend. So ten is even Stephen. Now, when a number is odd, Todd, remember it doesn't have a friend. Okay, there's an odd man out. But ten is even. Wow, that was a lot of work for our number of the day, but we did it. And we certainly need to celebrate with a cheer. Hmm, what chair should we do? I'm gonna do my favorite chair, and that is nailed it. Take your nail, put it in a piece of wood, get your hammer, bang, 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 nailed it. We nailed number of the day. All right. Now I'm signing off here, friends. Thank you for doing math with me today. Um, always remember, you are kind, you are smart, and you are important. Bye, friends. Thank All right, thank you, Miss Kim. So um, parents, I'm gonna have that number sheet um, available um, on our website by um, probably next week. I don't know if I'll get to it today. And that way your kiddos can follow along and actually like be doing the work with her. But I just, I love that whole system because it just gives them, especially right now, um, you know, all of your kids are at different levels. And so we just wanna kind of touch on a bunch of stuff. but. Um, if you are using our preschool or kindergarten curriculum, if you go into our preschool curriculum, quite honestly, um, our, our curriculum is about six months advanced. So if some of this is like, oh my gosh, this is like a lot for a four-year-old or a kindergartner, it's because we just, that's just the way our school, we, our kids stay with us for a long time. So we, um, uh, have a lot of them that are just exposed to things very year early on. And then by the time they get to their VBK year, their four year old year at our school, they're ready for kindergarten stuff. Um, so if you go into our preschool stuff, even preschool quarter two, you're going to find a lot of great kindergarten level four four year old level stuff. So even though we're on week 18 or we're on week one in our kindergarten, feel free to like look at other things and um, see the things that you might want to use with your kids. Everything we teach is an eight week quarter, so keep that in mind. So when you're doing um, anything, I would encourage you to start at like either week one or week nine or week, um, what is it, 17, so that you're gonna get that consistency of a solid eight weeks of those activities. And then that really helps your child master their concepts. Okay, are you guys ready? We're gonna get started with our handwriting, but I think we need a little bit of a stretch. I need everybody to stand up. We're gonna stretch really tall. Oh, are you touching the ceiling, guys? We're gonna stretch to the left. We're gonna stretch to the right. We're gonna touch our toes and wiggle, 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 wiggle. Did you do it? Okay, now let's sit down. We're gonna get started on our handwriting. So parents, remember, I really encourage you to make sure you are sitting right next to your child and doing the handwriting. Handwriting is painful and we do it really quick. And at the Reading Corner, we, we do it literally every single day for five minutes because it's really important for our kids to get fine motor skills, strengthen those fine motor muscles, and to really make sure that they are um, getting their letters the right way. So we're gonna move pretty quickly. I'm probably gonna do like 10 letters. So I'm gonna do it and then you're gonna do it and you're just gonna make one and try to make it as neat as you can. Make sure that when I say touch the bottom line, kiddos that your letters you're going to try to get them to touch that bottom line and not be flying everywhere but then you can go back and practice them um, a little bit more if you go to our website and press handwriting and type in handwriting you're going to see we have tons of handwriting sheets that give you the formation right at the top so you don't have to looking somewhere else or you can go onto our youtube and we have more handwriting lessons there but i'm going to get started so put your pencils down ready we're going to start with an a start at two o'clock Touch the bottom line, straight line down. Now you do it. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Okay, try a C. A C is just the same. It's a start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, stop. Now you try that. 
Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, stop. So boys and girls, if you think about a C, you don't start the C way up here. You start it down here. So when you're making an A or an O, think that you're actually making a C, but then you're finishing the circle, okay? Let's try an H. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump. Now you try it. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump. Okay, let's try an E. This one's the one we talked about yesterday where you, I see a lot of kids get sloppy with their E's. They kind of make it like a swirly. Remember, it's a really nice straight line first and it's kind of long, ready? Straight line up and around, touch the bottom line. Miss Karen's didn't even look that good. I'm gonna do it with you, ready? Straight line up and around, touch the bottom line. Great. Let's try a B. Remember a B has a B, B belly and a B when we go B, B, we make a line because we make a line with our mouth when we do the B, which means we make a line first. So there's all those kind of tricks for you. A lot of times we switch our B's and D's, but if you think of B makes a line, which means we make the line first. So watch how we make it. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a belly. Yep. Now you try it. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a belly. Okay, now let's try a D. Look at how I make a D with my mouth. D, D, D. Am I making a straight line? D, D, D. No, I'm almost making a circle. So when I do D, D, I know I'm gonna have the circle first. So it's just like an A, because we're starting at two o'clock. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, pull up, pull down. Now you try it. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, pull up, pull down. Let's try an M, okay? Notice I never lift my pencil when I'm doing my letters. It's a short line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump, come up and make a hump. Now you try it. Short line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump, come up and make a hump. Great job, guys. Okay, now put your pencils down, and this is your chance to just listen to me, okay? I'm going to do my writer's workshop, and I'm gonna show you how I do it, and then guys, you know what I would love? I would love if you do a writer's workshop when we're done and you have your mommies or daddies message me a picture of it. I would love to see what your writer's workshop looks like. Parents, again, the best thing, what we'd be so grateful for is if you would take pictures of your kids doing virtual school and then share it on Instagram, but make sure you tag Reading Corner Online. We're just getting flooded with so many kids doing these lessons, and it's just such a blessing for us to see that your kids are doing this. So if you can um, take a picture or take a picture of them doing the activities later, and just make sure you tag at thereadingcorner.org. Okay, so this is our writing paper. We talked about this yesterday. What do I put here? Name on my paper. First thing, Miss. Karen, oh my goodness, I am so sorry. If I didn't tell you my name and you guys are new, my name is Miss Karen. I'm so silly for not telling you that, I'm sorry. Okay, so, you know, we've been in our house for a while. Have you guys been in your house? And the kids have been playing outside, but we aren't really going anywhere. But the Twisty Treat ice cream place is still open. So after we get done today, we are going to go get ice cream. So I want to draw a quick sketch. We get it in our car because they do have a, have you guys, do you guys have a twisty treat where you live? The greatest thing about the twisty treat store, you guys, it's like a big ice cream cone. I'm not a very good drawer, but that's like kind of what it looks like. And then you can stand right here and there's like a little person in there. And then there's a menu. Do you know what a menu is? 
Yeah, a menu tells you what you can order, right? So it has like all these different items that you can order. And then we kind of come, I'm not very good at drawing, on the side, because we go in our car and we order our Twisted Treat. Now, do you guys remember what these are? What are these called again? There are trickster words. So if I say a word that you think is a trickster word, make sure you tell me to circle it. So we always say it, clap it, dash it, write it. So I'm going to say it. I want some ice cream. Clap it with me. I want some ice cream. Okay, that tells me I have I want some ice cream. Five words. And then I have to dash it. I want, what? Oh, is the word want one of the trickster words we're talking about today? Well, then I need to circle it, don't I? I want some, what? Oh, it's another trickster word. This makes it so easy to write because I don't have to know how to write these words because I can swipe them. Just like Miss Kim talked about swiper, no swiping in writing or in math. We use swipe or no swiping in writing too. So I've got the word some. I want some. Hmm. I don't think I have enough room to go here. Where would I go to finish my sentence? I'd swirl around and come back down. Ice cream. And instead of a period, you guys, I'm going to put an exclamation point. And an exclamation point tells my readers that I am really excited. So an exclamation point is kind of like an upside down I. So I've got the word I. Actually, the word I is a trickster word too. So now I'm going to start writing. I'm going to put I. Hmm. That I doesn't look right. I know. Did you know that when an I is by itself, it's always tall? Say that. When an I is by itself, it's always tall. Meaning, we never make an I by itself a short I. When it's by itself, it's always tall. Try to remember that. When an I is by itself, it's always tall. I want, oh, that's such a hard word. I wish I could just swipe it from somewhere in my room. <gasps> that's right, it's a trickster word. Okay, this is what I do with trickster words. I see a lot of my friends look at the word and they put a W and then an A, and then an N, and then a T, but we wanna to try to get a picture of it and do it all at one point. So this is what you're gonna do. Look at the word, you're looking at it. Now take a picture, click. Now close your eyes. Do you see that word in your brain? Do you see all four of those letters? Okay, I'm gonna take a picture, click. I'm gonna close my eyes. I see the letters W A N T. Okay, I'm gonna try to write it without having to look at it. Do you remember what letters it is? W A N T. So it's kind of like our word went, that was W E N T, but this is want, so it's W A N T. Pretty neat, huh? Okay. We had the word some. Now, sometimes doing that picture is hard. So I like to make sure that my things, if you have a pocket chart or something like that, I like to make sure that my, I can move my cards because then I can just stick it right here and I can swipe it because that's what it's for. As, oh, I gotta make sure that my letters don't trick me because when I'm paying attention to writing, my letters start to get really sloppy because I'm not paying attention to making my letters right. So slow down and you got a lot to think about, sounding out words and spelling them and writing them nicely. So I'm just gonna take my time. I'm not in a rush. I'm gonna make my word and I'm gonna make sure I'm using my, taking my time to write my letters. Did I write it the right way? Awesome. I want some I scream. Now this I is with other letters. So now I can make it a small one. I, now this is kind of a tricky word because it's letter. Because it sounds like s, the S. But there is another letter that actually makes two sounds. It says k, s. What letter makes two sounds? K, s. 
You're right. It's the letter C. Okay. And now I have the word cream. So if I had my letters in front of me, I don't have the right letters in front of me. I would give my kiddo these letters and I would have them, I would just give them a C, an R, an E, and an M. I might give them the EE, -E, but they don't know the EA yet. So I would give them those letters and have them um, write them out. These are the letters. K, er, E, M. It's not the one that's just k. It's the one that's k. Which one's that? You're right, it's the C. K, er, R, E, E, E. Oh, that's a funny phonogram. What do I do? I have to underline it. Cream, mmm, mmm. Great job, guys. Now, notice that I misspelled the word cream, parents, because I've introduced the E-E. -E. I have not introduced the E-A. So I'm a teacher, boys and girls, so sometimes I just try to model things for you, but then I always put the right way of spelling things up on the top. So parents, I only encourage you to do this when you're actually modeling for them, and you can model for them as well, just like I'm doing. When they are writing, whatever they write, whatever letters they write are what they wrote, and I never correct it. I never correct their writing. I want them to know that this is their expression and this is the way they're getting the writing out. What I will do is afterwards, I'll ask their permission to write the words, because you'll see if you do this every day in about two or three weeks and then two or three months, the progress that you're going to see in their writing is so fun. But what tends to happen is if we go back like two weeks prior, we try to remember what they wrote. Sometimes we can't really understand it. So I write the words really little underneath, but I always ask for permission. And then I will go and I will ask them if they want me to um, label their writing. Um, their model here, they might not be ready for that yet. So if I'm just modeling how I'm going to model, so like I might write the word car and I might write the word me and I might write the word store and I write, might write the word menu. What typically you'll find is that your kids are going to write about their family. So they're going to make this whole line of people and you want to make sure that you can label all those people. So now it's your turn. So I'm going to turn off the um, school in a couple minutes, but you guys now can go and print some of the activities or you can just get index cards and put your own trickster words on them and play memory or play I spy where you're going to land on it or put them all well, the words on the walls. You can go to our YouTube channel and practice our I say, you say, you can do another writing lesson if you want. You can do another handwriting lesson or you can just get paper doesn't have to be fancy, write it out like this, and then you try to do your own writing lesson. If you do a writing sample, make sure your mommies or daddies send a picture of it to me on message so I can put it on my Facebook and my Instagram and show what an amazing writer you are. So you guys did so good today. We packed a lot into this. Did you have fun? Okay, great. So we will see you again tomorrow. If you want to see other lessons, remember you can go to our YouTube and we've got the recordings from the last couple days. So, and again, please feel free to share this with any um, parents that have three-year-olds to be on um, kindergartners. If you have younger kids, we have a really great toddler one and a really great three-year-old one with other teachers. Um, you would just go to the recordings for those. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining us.